everybody, this is AHA Computing in a nutshell. I'm your guide, Alex Nugent, and this episode is What is AHA Computing? Well, let's start with computing. Look it up uh, on the internet, uh, Wikipedia, and what it'll tell you is that computing is any goal-oriented activity requiring, benefiting from, or creating algorithmic processes. Uh, for example, through computers. It's a very long-winded explanation. Uh, it's simpler than that. It's using machines to solve algorithmic problems. I know if you don't know what an algorithm is, definitely look that up. But uh, to explain it very briefly to those who are unfamiliar with the term, uh, imagine somebody comes to you and asks you to solve a problem, and you do, and then another person comes to you and asks you to solve the problem, and then you do that, and then another and another, and you get tired of solving the problem over and over again. So what you do is you write down a specific list of instructions for somebody else to follow that will solve their problem, or the specific problem that people are coming to you and asking you about. Uh, that's, in essence, that list, uh, it's like a recipe in, in, in essence, it's an algorithm. Uh, and it's uh, very specific. Um, it's really just a set of instructions telling a machine what to do in order to solve a problem. Now, AHA computing uh, is really quite generic, um, and it's just using AHA nodes to solve algorithmic problems. And we can use AHA nodes in various ways. And you probably don't know what an AHA node is, um, and I'm just going to gloss over it. Be sure to check out the next episode in the series called What is an AHA node? I want to get more information about that. Uh, now, first of all, we're mostly interested in machine learning tasks. Uh, we're, we're not interested in solving every algorithmic problem out there. We're not interested in reinventing modern computing. Uh, we really came at this because we want to make very efficient learning uh, systems. We want to solve the problems that brains solve. And uh, that's what we're mostly focused on. Um, but along the way, we discovered that um, aha nodes are also logic functions. And because of that, we can do generic computation. Whether or not it's useful, we don't know. Again, we're interested in machine learning. So, first question, what is an AHA node? Uh, these two little circuits here, formative memristors, uh, these are AHA nodes. These are different AHA node configurations. Uh, again, check out later episodes to, um, to know more about that. And so the, the major questions, which I'll try to get through quickly, is how, uh, what, and why? Uh, how does this work? How does AHA computing work? Uh, what can you do with it? And why do you do AHA computing? Okay, so first, the how. Uh, we call this the thermodynamic RAM, or KT RAM technology stack. Um, it's, this is an abstract uh, representation of a uh, multiple levels of abstraction that take us from devices that we call memristors, actually even below the device we call a memristor. Um, we think of it as collections of what we call metastable switches. Um, through memristors, through memristor circuits, um, through uh, cores, through collections of cores, um, all the way up this, this stack that ends in, in essence, a software layer that um, we're all quite familiar with. Um, that's it. So, you know, Somebody who wants to exploit um, AHA computing, um, once we've built these processors, will do pretty much what it is that they do now. They'll just write code. Um, but underneath the hood, that code is going to execute on new types of processors, physically adaptive processors, in this case, thermodynamic RAM. But there's other architectures that are possible. And in the process, we're going to exploit this thing called an AHA node to solve our problems. Okay, so that's the how, um, very briefly, what can AHA nodes do? Well, I mentioned before that we can do logic. Uh, now, the, the unsupervised attractor states of AHA nodes are logic functions. More than that, they're universal logic functions. This means that we can acquire any logic function from uh, the sets of func logic functions that are available. Um, in these attractor states. Now, if this is confusing to you, uh, don't worry. Uh, this, this is not hard, but it's new. And because of that, it's very easy to misinterpret what it is that we say. Um, and it's also, um, well, it's a lot of work to, to go in and understand it. But once you do, um, this will all be fairly clear. Okay, so uh, unsupervised attractor states of 
the HA nodes are universal reconfigurable logic gates. This means we can perform computations with them. Now, as I said, we're mostly interested in machine learning applications. And the other thing you can do with AHA nodes is something called classification. People call this pattern recognition. Um, it's really a foundational operation in the field of machine learning. It's mapping um, one set of inputs to, to another set of outputs. Um, for example, understanding what's in images, classifying text, um, all of these things rely on this foundational uh, operation called classification. Now, we've tested this against a number of benchmarks and found that AHA nodes are indeed very good building blocks for um, this classification operation. And you can perform a lot of things. For example, signal prediction uh, is really just classification in disguise. And anomaly detection is also just classification in disguise. So, we can do pattern recognition, anomaly detection, signal prediction, these sorts of things. Next is something that we call feature learning. Uh, there's multiple ways to go about this. Um, on the right is something called clustering. It's uh, taking patterns of data and um, grouping them together in certain ways so that similar groupings of similar patterns um, map to sort of the same output. Um, the thing on the left is adaptive spike encoding. You can think of that as sort of an analog to digital conversion. Uh, both of these things are important in the process of performing pattern recognition operations. Now, finally, uh, AHA nodes are or can be made into uh, sort of biased random number generators. And this allows us to do actually very interesting things. Um, one thing called combinatorial optimization, or just optimization for short. Uh, what this is, is uh, it allows you to search uh, what's called a value function um, or a fitness function to maximize some value. And uh, on the left, what we see is sort of a very um, bumpy uh, fitness function with lots of local, local maxima. And uh, the system of multiple aha nodes um, acting as what we call thermodynamic bits, these little biased random number generators, uh, are able to hone in to the, uh, to the optimal solution. Uh, they perform what's called hill climbing, um, or uh, gradient descent. Uh, we can hook these things up in various ways to solve uh, problems. Uh, for example, Sudoku, this is an example of a planning problem, combinatorial optimization. You have all these constraints. You have your rows, columns, blocks, and they all have to um, they all have to satisfy certain constraints, and the puzzle is about figuring out those constraints. And so if you hook these things up in the right way, the system will spontaneously solve this problem. Um, and in the bottom right, we have uh, robotic actuation. This is actually a combination of classification and combinatorial optimization. Uh, really, it's just, uh, well, it's under the hood. It's a bunch of muscles that are controlling the, the joints of a robotic arm, and all it knows is that if it gets closer to the ball, it's better. It's trying to um, ascend this, uh, this gradient, uh, and spontaneously, these aha nodes will guide the arm to the ball. Uh, these are all examples of uh, combinatorial optimization. So you put this all together, um, and you get the building blocks of machine intelligence. Uh, I showed you feature learning, clustering, classification. Uh, these are the building blocks of something we call perception, the ability to take raw data and um, ascertain what's in the data. Um, rather than just pixels, um, you know, is it a coffee mug? Is it a cell phone? Uh, pattern recognition, object recognition. Uh, planning. Uh, this is combinatorial optimization. This involves uh, making predictions, detecting anomalies, and doing combinatorial search. When you're trying to plan your trip across town and you have to get groceries and pick up the kids at soccer and get to some appointment by some time, in your head you're thinking about all the routes to take. For example, the traveling salesman problem. These are all examples of planning. And finally, control, the ability to actuate multiple degrees of freedom to attain some reward. This is important in uh, robotics, clearly, uh, and something called reinforcement learning. The ability to uh, 
learn how to control uh, something in the environment to attain a goal or reward. And when you put all of these things together, uh, you end up with, uh, well, the building blocks of machine intelligence. And our goals, uh, our main goal in Gnome Inc. and with AHA Computing is to solve the, the same types of problems that brains solve. Now, this leads us to the last question, which is why? And, uh, well, we have more episodes for you to check out. Um, check out why AHA Computing and uh, why is AHA Computing so efficient, the adaptive power problem. Um, but long story short, it's about energy efficiency. Uh, the computers we have today um, and the way that we compute is it's phenomenal um, and it's amazingly useful but it fails um, rather hard for large-scale adaptive learning systems uh, like brains. Um, because of this, we need radical changes in our architecture and our underlying technology. Um, changes in our architecture uh, means bringing memory and processing closer together, distributing um, our computations in a more parallel fashion. And the technology is taking advantage of new devices, uh, we call them memristors, that enable us to reduce some of the operations um, that we use repeatedly um, in machine learning, synaptic integration and adaptation, reducing those operations to what's called an analog operation. Uh, this is really exploiting physics uh, in order to reduce or really eliminate the energy that would normally be associated with computing those functions. Okay. So with that said, uh, I hope this has intrigued you enough to continue watching. Um, check out the, the next episodes in the series and uh, come to gnome.org um, to ask us a question.